Still Crazy After All These Beers is brought to you by our friends at Michelob, crafting a better beer. And Porter Pong, the world's number one best-selling inflatable beer pong table at PorterPong.com. We're here at the Philadelphia Navy Yard. I'm Aaron. I'm Julia. I'm Karen. And you're watching Still, Still Crazy After All, all These Beers. beers. Welcome everyone to Still Crazy After All These Beers. Matt Allen from Voodoo Brewing, and I love the name of the town, Meadville, yes. Pennsylvania. So you guys never got into doing meads, right? Number one question asked, <laughs> always, do you do mead? Not yet. We thought about it. It's definitely something we'd like to do, hence the name in the town, but uh, just something that hasn't really come to fruition yet. We've got a lot of stuff going on now. Let's talk about some of that stuff, because this company really is relatively new. You opened one. Uh, we, September of 07. September of 07, and yet you're getting quite a cool reputation going on in the uh, in, in PA, in Jersey, and actually elsewhere. Let's talk about, you know, the genesis of the company, how did it develop? You are the founder, as you mentioned, and the head brewer. Yes. Uh, basically, I've been brewing for 18 years now in the craft industry, uh, working for other breweries, designing and building other breweries, and... Uh, Grew up in Pennsylvania, decided to move back to Pennsylvania and just do my own thing, basically make the beers that I wanted to make. And I didn't want to necessarily compete in the pale ale, amber ale category. Uh, I wanted to make a variety of beers and I wanted to take the beers that would normally be seasonals and make those my year round beers, just adding to that uh, consistently. So, now, no way, I mentioned PA and Jersey, but also Michigan? Michigan, yes. I spent about 10 years building breweries and working in Michigan, so I have quite a following of uh, homebrew uh, friends up there, and uh, I figured that's a nice built-in market. So. so, Matt, tell us about, first of all, the flavor I'm holding right here. That's our Four Seasons IPA. Uh, originally, we based it on Pennsylvania being a Four Seasons state, and uh, we were going to make a different style of IPA each season. Um, but being small and t tackling way more than I thought, Basically, it's just turned into every time we brew it, we just brew it with a different hop variety, malt variety, and yeast variety. So basically, you're never getting the same IPA, and that's kind of, uh, I think, the way that an IPA drinker drinks. They always want another IPA every time, so uh, that's kind of the way we've been working with it, and it seems to be working well for us. This is a big beer. I just had my first sip of it, and this is a really well-rounded beer. Tell me about the, uh, the hop profile on this and also the IBUs. Uh, this one is a blend of what I call our winter style. We get earthy, a little bit more malty, a little bit bigger alcohol. It runs about 8.5% uh, in that seven, 60 to 70 range of IBUs. And we blend uh, Challenger, East Kent Goldings, uh, Fuggles, uh, Crystal, Cascade, Chinook, and Centennial hops all into the beer, as well as uh, we use floor malted Maris Otter malt, uh, some a Canadian two row for our base malt, uh, English crystal and American crystal malt, as well as we blend a super high gravity English yeast with our house ale yeast. So it's that's kind of the uh, the mix of, of both sides of the of the pond. And this is gaining some real recognition, like I mentioned, isn't it? Yes, it's actually uh, we made it to the Sweet 16 in the uh, the national IPA competition and uh, hoping to further our, uh, our existence in that competition. And hopefully we're going to keep everyone appraised by going to our website, which is still crazy after all these beers.com. Will you put something up on your site as well? I definitely can. I and will. your website, let's mention that while we're here. Is www.voodoobrewery.com. How about the name? Talk about the name. How did that come about, the Voodoo? Because people, there are some people who are thinking about a company, a really cool company down in New Orleans. Yes. And uh, so let, let's let's talk about the name Voodoo itself. Well, basically, I, we get mixed with them quite a bit. They're Dixie. They make a beer called Voodoo. We're Voodoo. Make beers that aren't called Dixie. Uh, so really what it came down to is a very good German brewmaster friend of mine uh, that worked at Atwater Block originally. He and I were very good friends when I was in Detroit brewing beer. And he really loved the name Voodoo. Uh, we used to joke around about starting a company up. He and I, uh, we figured between a German and some crazy artist American guy, it would be a, a voodoo of a brewery. And uh, for complications with his family, he moved back to Germany, took over the family brewery, and uh, basically left it to me and said, if you, if you want, I want you to do something with it someday. So we kind of fiddled with it and played with it and 
it's a name that sticks. When you say voodoo, you think of something, Absolutely. good or bad. <laughs> but hey, there's good and bad to everything. And as they say, as long as they're talking about you, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Exactly. Good. Any publicity is good publicity. What are some of the other flavors we're talking about here with the company? Uh, well, what we have here today is our Voodoo Love Child, which is a uh, basically a blend of passion fruit, raspberries, and Michigan sour cherries uh, in a Belgian-style triple. Uh, runs about 10% alcohol. Uh, we have our Pilzilla, which is uh, second highest rated Keller beer uh, on Beer Advocate. Tell everyone what a Keller beer is. Keller beer is basically a German style lagered beer that comes directly from the cellar or cellar tanks without any filtration or any processing. Basically naturally carbonated, uh, still hazy, uh, unadulterated. And ours is a relatively hoppy form of that. We use uh, nine different varietals of German, Czech, and Polish hops, and we hop at ten different additions throughout the entire boil. So it's, uh, it's, a, it's a big, hoppy, German-style lager. It kind of gives you an idea of what IPA would be with lager yeast. You are not afraid to roll the dice, are you? Oh, no, I, I don't have any choice. I, <laughs> there's a lot of competition out there. You've got to stick out somehow. Absolutely valid. Okay, what so. else are we talking about? Our wine known as Big Brown, which is uh, inspired by a famous uh, band, Primus. Uh, it's their wine known as Big Brown Beaver song. Uh, hence the reason I came up with making a very aggressive style brown ale. Uh, I guess some people call it an Indian brown ale. Uh, we just call it brown ale. That's how we start out. And then uh, we have our we have our Four Seasons IPA, which you are holding. Uh, we have two other beers our, uh, that we do full year. Our Grand Met, which is a Belgian style triple. Uh, that runs about 10% alcohol. And then we have our White Magic of the Sun, which is a spiced Belgian style wheat beer, basically a double white, I guess. Some people like to classify it. We don't classify it as other than beer. Uh, it's made with juniper berries, coriander, orange peel, lemongrass, 12 different kinds of peppercorns, and uh, I'm trying to think of what else. There's something else in there. You know, the curious thing, you brought up such a good point a couple minutes ago, and that is finding that niche in the marketplace. It's so difficult because it is so darn competitive out there, and I think you're really successful at doing that. I mean, we're trying. We're not. Our goal. We're not looking to be a big brewery. I mean, I really still want to stay small and fun. And I think when you get too big to a point, not that it's not everyone's goal, but uh, we want to stay profitable. But we want to be able to just do what we want to do without a board of directors and and all that stuff. That I think that kind of for me hampers my ability to just do what I want to do when I want to do it. And I think that that leads to uh, that can lead to whole variety of different styles and, and entertainment as we can see you know I mean you look around in the market the guys that don't have a board of directors pointing their the way are usually the guys that are making crazy off the wall kind of beers so um, but at the same time there's there's plenty of drinkers there are a lot of mouths and there's a lot of chances to drink beer well, now we're going to wish you all the luck in the world if this is any representation of the product you're putting out people need need to try some voodoo beer and I, I know I'm going to have another one a little bit later on so Matt thanks for joining us Thank you. Well, it's still crazy after all these beers. And you know what? I got to tell you, we have a band that does our closing uh, music for us. They're called Final Gravity, guys oh. out in California. And as you can imagine, they, they're in the home brewing as well. So Final Gravity is going to take us home. We'll see you next time on Still Crazy After All These Beers.